eventually 100 people, primarily Palestinians who had not seen their family in years and years, went into Gaza. Several people who were, were working with international aid organizations went in, but the majority of people did not. Well, as we were trying to organize land convoys to go in, there were other people that were too. Viva Palestina, a wonderful group that's George Galloway, a former member of the uh, member of Parliament of the UK, who had or has now organized three massive, massive land convoys that have come from Europe with hundreds of vehicles and supplies. Three times they've gotten supplies into Gaza. And another group was challenging another part of the blockade, the siege of Gaza, and that was called the Free Gaza Boat Movement. And since the middle of, of 2008, a group that's headed by Hoeda Arif and Adam Shapiro, uh, both co-founders of the International Solidarity Movement, a group that takes international people into the West Bank, into Gaza, to stand with the Palestinians as they are doing their work, their, their farming, their agriculture, their shepherding, their picking uh, olives, uh, escorting kids to, to, to schools through the checkpoints, all of this to, to try as an international person to help Palestinians get through the, the checkpoints, the blockades that the Israelis have. Well, Hawida and Arif, uh, Hawida and Adam, and this team of Free Gaza, since the middle of 2008, had decided they were going to challenge the naval blockade of Gaza. You know, right now, Gaza fishermen can't go out any more than probably on a good day, a mile offshore, because the Israeli military is patrolling. And if the fishermen go out with their little fishing boats, they will be accosted, they will be shot out, they will be hosed down with fire hoses. Many times they're told to strip naked, dive into the ocean, swim over to the Israeli patrol boat, and their boat is taken and then taken to the port of Ashton. Um, how do you challenge a naval blockade? A blockade that the Israelis have self-imposed. It's a self-declared a self uh, uh, security zone around, not Israel, but Gaza. Um, well, they have their, their naval fleet that's out there patrolling all the time. And from their perspective, they're saying, we don't want uh, vessels that possibly could be carrying weapons to Hamas and other groups coming in. But what they're doing in this is preventing all types of vessels to come in that would be carrying food and, and reconstruction materials. In 2008, five ships were purchased by the Free Gaza Movement, purchased and sailed from Cyprus into Gaza. And interestingly enough, the Israeli government let those ships go in. It was the first time in 40 some odd years that there had been ships coming from an international port that had come into Gaza City. They took out the people from Gaza. They took out students that had scholarships but were unable to get Israeli permission to leave Gaza. Uh, they took out people that had medical conditions that were not able to get permission from the Israelis or the Egyptians to come out for medical treatment. But starting with the, in December of 2008 and January of 2009 with the 22-day uh, Israeli attack on Gaza, the next three ships that were sent by the Free Gaza Boat Movement were forcibly stopped and boarded. And the last one, in June of 2009, was actually rammed by an Israeli naval vessel. On board that vessel was Marie McGuire, a Nobel Peace Laureate from Ireland, and also a U.S. Congresswoman, Cynthia McKinney. They both spent 10 days in Israeli prison before they were deported. With the actual ramming of, of, a, of a ship, um, the Free Gaza Movement decided that they needed to relook what was going on. That one ship carrying 15, 20, 25 people was not really what was going to make a difference in ending that blockade. So from the summer of 2009, they started talking to international groups about having not one boat, not two ships, not three, but let's have a flotilla. Let's send a lot of ships. Let's send a lot of ships, and maybe one, two, three of them will get through the blockade. And particularly to carry the reconstruction materials, the re prefabricated houses, the medical supplies that are needed in Gaza, because those things were not being permitted to come through by the Israeli blockade. So over a period of year, of a year, 
the Free Gaza group work to get a coalition of groups, including the European Coalition Solidarity, Palestinian Solidarity Group, uh, with a, a, a Turkish group uh, called the International Humanitarian Foundation, or in Turkish, the abbreviation is IHH, a large, large international uh, organization that has programs all over the world, similar to our CARE, or you know, one of the big NGOs that the United States has. They also started working with, with humanitarian groups in Indonesia and Malaysia. And the Malaysian Foundation, headed by a former Prime Minister of Malaysia, decided it would contribute in, ma in a major way to this. You know, Malaysia and Indonesia are some of the largest of the Muslim countries of the world. And they, in solidarity with the people of Gaza, said, we will, we will finance a great part of that flotilla to include the purchase of a freighter, a freighter that had been found up in Ireland, a freighter that was purchased and then renamed, renamed the Rachel Corey, renamed for a young American woman who, in, in March of 2003, had stood in Rafa, Gaza, as an Israeli D-9 bulldozer, an American bulldozer, a D-9 bulldozer, operated by an Israeli military uh, soldier, um, was on a house demolition mission. And Rachel knew the, the doctor and his family that, were, that lived in the house that was going to be demolished. And she, as a part of the International Solidarity Movement, put her body out in front of that Israeli bulldozer saying, don't run over, don't knock down this house. And the Israeli military operator ran over her. Ran over her and then backed up over her, killing her. Well, for the people of Gaza, the image of Rachel Corey lives on. And to have that ship renamed for Rachel Corey, to be coming as one of the four cargo ships that would be bringing material aid to people of Gaza, was really, really moving. And as you can tell, I'm still moved. Every time I tell this story, I can't tell it without a tear or two. And part of it is that in March of 2009, on our first big trip back to Gaza, with us were the parents of Rachel Corey, Craig and Cindy Corey, who live up in Olympia, Washington. And it was on the sixth anniversary of the death of their daughter that they were in Rafa, Gaza with us. Four cargo ships, Four passenger ships were a part of the original part of the Gaza flotilla. Ultimately, two of the ships were not, did not go on the mission. One of them was one of the ships that I was originally on, the Challengers, Challenger 1 and Challenger 2, that came out of, of Crete, a, a, a huge island, a Greek island. Uh, that's where the two free Gaza boats left, Challenger 1 and Challenger 2. Uh, we left in, in the morning of uh, May 26th. It was really exciting to see people from 15 nations on those two ships, two small ships, only 35 passengers on total. Um, we had people from Scotland, we had people from Malaysia, we had people from um, the United States, we had people from Indonesia, we had people from, um, we had a Palestinian young man a young man, not so young actually, he was in his 40s, but he had been, he had not been to Gaza in over 26 years. His parents had moved back to Gaza 18 years before. He was, they were tired of traveling, trying to find a home throughout the world as many Palestinians have, that they moved from place to place to place trying to find a home. His parents finally said, we're, we're finished, we want to go back to Gaza. 18 years before they said that. Mohammed had left. He had stayed on a trip, on a journey around the world of his own. And finally he was in the UK. He had gotten a residency permit from the UK and was able to travel with that permit. He was coming with us to go to Gaza to see his mother that he had not seen in 18 years, who was in a hospital. And this is another place that I cry every time. Because one hour out of Crete, while we were still in cell, cell phone connection, he got a text message saying that his mother, that he hadn't seen in 18 years, had just died in the Gaza hospital. 